Testing much better. Mic check one two one two. We in that bitch. For those of you that can't read the room, the second episode is always litter. Is that a word? Litter. More lit. More lit sounds better. Litter is when you throw shit. Out that's by the time we've had the second and third drink. <laughs> Motherfuckers is loose. That's facts. Ready to talk. Motherfuckers loose as a goose. Um, bro, it's almost Christmas. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think. I mean, you're almost fucking over, bro. It's it's crazy, guys. We were talking about how we'll be celebrating a year of warm the crib. Yeah, not too man. long. Facts. Not too long. We'll be celebrating a year. We trying to do something special for that one. Yeah. Big facts. Yep. Uh, so I just say, let's say, just fucking get into it. Facts. Let's get it motherfucking popping. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I am what I am, and I'm going to be the very best of what I am. And for those who don't like me confidentially, I don't give a damn. I'd like to thank you for letting me be myself. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the crib. I'm Ramon. I'm Darian, this is episode 42. Yeah, I was waiting for it again. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. You know, it's funny. I was about to try and say it in Spanish, but I realized I didn't know 42 in Spanish. Oh, uh, yeah. But I was proud of myself. I forgot to mention last week. I don't speak well, but I understand really well. Mm. And a lot of times the guys will say, do you speak Spanish? And I say, you know, muy poquito. And then they would speak Spanish to me, and I can understand most of it. Mm-hmm. Like I was like I was kind of like Proud of myself Like I, I understand it Yeah nah That shit feel good Especially like <clears throat> When there's a language barrier With talking to somebody mm-hmm. That's one of the best feelings When y'all get to understand it And y'all know What the other is trying to say Yeah we both joke We both We were I think we were serious But we gotta remember That we said we were gonna do it Like try and learn Conversational Spanish Just mm-hmm. We wanna go back to Yeah just, at least Just the basics So you understand The shit, shit for, the for real Most spoken language In the world Right Is that I'm pretty sure of it. Everybody speaks some goddamn Spanish. Yeah, so. Everybody. It's funny how I. A lot of these niggas don't speak Spanish. It's funny my rationale. In high school, we had a choice. We only had a choice of Spanish or French, right? And at the time, I was living everybody else's dream, and I was going to be an engineer. So my thought was, like, you know, what would make the most sense? What skill would it make the most sense to have as an engineer? And so I started thinking about things that were electronic, that were Spanish or French. And the only thing I could think of at the time, my mother had owned this car that was a Renault, which is a French-made mm. manufacturer. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know any Spanish manufacturers. Right. So my my re, my rationale for taking French was that, well, it's more than likely French is going to be the bigger language. Huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did I fuck up? Yeah, that's some real <laughs> shit. If you think about it, like, who the fuck really uses French unless you're in France? Like, don't nobody, unless you go there consistently, you don't need French. And a lot of times over there, they fucking speak English. Meanwhile, fast forward, and we we go in our stores here in the U.S., and the signs are in English and Spanish. How about English? So I, English? <laughs> so I want to learn. I want to I wanna learn. I'm sure there's an app for it. Facts. I want to learn that. I want to learn uh, Japanese too. I feel like that's one of the hardest ones. Yeah, I'm, you I always like, take on the hardest fucking. I, <laughs> I like a challenge, motherfucker. <laughs> nah, but I've always liked uh, Japanese culture, and I've always wanted to go to Japan and all that shit. So yeah, my son and his wife are about to go to Japan. Hey, tell him take mad photos. I'm I will. Sh- I need to see them. I will. It's big facts. He's still talking about he wants to come through. He wants to be on the show. So yeah, we need him, man. We <laughs> need him. I want. I want him here too. He cool as shit. Yeah. Big facts. I'll let you, I, I won't. I'll stay out of that one. I'll let you guys decide what you're going to talk about. Just <laughs> and shit. Um, yeah, yeah. What are you grateful win. for? I'm all. We just started talking. Oh shit. shit! Yeah, we just started conversating. I'm. I'm grateful for this podcast. For real, for real. It's it's my way of opening up and con- having conversations, and people be able to see my thought process on shit. Because not a lot of times, like if a lot of y'all know. Out in public, I'm nine times out of ten, I'm not fucking talking to you. Like that's right. <laughs> no disrespect, but nine times out of ten, I'm just not conversating with nobody. Right. It's my way to just get my thought process out there and and I really don't give a fuck how y'all feel about it. No disrespect. Just yeah. I just you can look at me as a cool person, you can look at me as an asshole. I'm me. That's yeah. it. Um I am grateful for sometimes I think at work. 
I get frustrated because people don't know shit. Mm-hmm. And I have to remember, I guess not everybody has the capacity to learn or absorb information. And so I'm grateful for my God-given ability to absorb and process information. Mm-hmm. I, I think is valuable. Um, now, on the flip side, I think anybody can learn what they choose to learn. But for some reason, stuff just sticks with me. It's funny. Every morning I go outside mm-hmm. and I go outside. I take care to go outside without my phone and a cup of coffee. And I just kind of sit in my thoughts. And in the morning, I say what I'm grateful for while I'm outside, right? And this morning, I was I said something to myself and then I laughed and I said, why do you know that? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I, I I think it's a blessing that I overlook. And we always talk about the reason you have to do things. And I think the things and the people that I encounter that for lack of, that are stupid, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's the bigger way to look at it instead of getting aggravated as stupid, it's a way to remind myself that I'm grateful for my intelligence. That is a very articulate way of saying there's some dumbasses out there. That's a, that's yeah. a nah, but that's real shit though. It, you got to be good for the, got to be grateful for the intelligence that you have because you could be misinformed and not understand shit like a lot of people. Like like they always say, common sense ain't too fucking common. Like there's a it lot isn't. of things that you would think that a motherfucker would be like, that's not right to do. Somebody else would be like. I didn't know that. Like, yeah. I didn't know you shouldn't do that. Like, And I never, I, I do not have a problem with ignorance. I have a problem with keeping yourself ignorant. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why it frustrates me. I think innately I want everybody to be, get better around me, especially like around me. Like, I want to see people improve, right? Mm-hmm. And so if a person comes in and they need help with something and they're willing to learn, I am so patient, for the most part, 99% of the time, with helping them learn. Where I become impatient is like, I don't want to do it. Just do it for me. Like, that Mm. shit drives me fucking crazy. Nah, yeah. I feel you. That shit would would upset you because they're not... They're not trying to retain any information that could help them not need help doing certain shit. They just want somebody else to be able to do it. But in the same sense, it's your job. That's the bullshit. Like, (laughs) it's Some of it is. Some of it is. Some of it is is unnecessary, and they try to drag shit out. Like, that that damn lady with the printer that one time that (laughs) that I helped, and I shouldn't have helped because her fucking critters started coming on the counter and shit. Oh, my goodness. That shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. But I I love the interactions where I could interact with people. Bro, I almost fucking cried at work the other day. Mm. I'm hoping this couple. Hey. I'm sorry. I'm fucking with you. (laughs) I'm hoping this couple, older couple. And they were just, the, the woman was super sweet and the guy was super funny, like kind of like your, your cool ass older uncle. And um, I'm talking to the lady and she says, her name is Louise. And I get goosebumps. My grandmother, my mom's mom's name is Louise, right? Oh, shit. So I'm like, oh, my, my, my grandmother's name is Louise. You must be a great person. And then later we're talking and she was a, she's a nurse. Mm. My grandmother was a nurse. And bro, I don't know. It just I got emotional for a second helping yeah. them with their fucking computer because, but it, it made me think of my grandmother. That's funny because it's probably. I feel like shit like that aren't like it's that's too much of a coincidence. I feel like you were supposed to at some point meet that person to give you that memory back to yourself. Because granted, you always gonna remember your grandma. Yeah. You always gonna remember what she did and all of that, but. Hearing somebody else with that same name and the same occupation, that's like yeah, it was like oh, whoa, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's like that's like a reality check. But now nah, you probably was just meant to meet her just to feel that that emotion. It, it's crazy because like I, I I mean I think about my grandmother, and my mother often, but sometimes you just have this reflective moment. And me and my grandmother just had this special special relationship, man. Um, even at some lengths, at times, even though I spent more time around my mother, I felt like me and my grandmother had gotten closer. We just had this really open and honest relationship. Like I don't know, it's 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 weird, but it, it was it felt it, it gave me a tingle. It almost made me cry, like a, a a cry of joy, like just like you know, you must be a special lady too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? My grandmother's a very special woman. Um, I've always had this regret because my uncle. Did I talk about this before? I don't remember. My uncle had asked me to speak 
at her oh, funeral. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, I did. Tell yeah. You. I don't know if I told it on the podcast or I told you, but yeah, and I didn't. And I always, I always think about like I wish I had had the opportunity to talk about how great a woman is. So here you guys go, phenomenal woman. Right. Um. Anyway. Um. Other than that, my week's been normal, chill. Hey guys, by the time you're listening to this, it's three days three till days, Santa's coming. Three right? days till Santa's coming. So that fight, what, fat white man coming down your chimney. Do you guys celebrate Christmas? Because I know we were talking last week. You don't really participate nope. in the holiday. We don't celebrate. We still create like our own little holiday. But do you buy stuff for your children and exchange gifts with each other? No, I don't buy shit for my children because they want too much expensive shit. So <laughs> they get that shit throughout the year. But I say you we all we all do a little gift exchange. Everybody get one thing for somebody in the family. Okay. And then we're going to like do little games and whoever wins the games can get certain gifts that we already picked out and shit. So, yeah, we got, we got, we got, we got things we're alternating with the normal tradition. So. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I saw your boy, was it your wife's post or your post where you said, you know, y'all, y'all love hanging things on My trees. My wife's post. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all forgot we were the first things we That's hung on facts. trees. Y'all love hanging shit on trees. First it was my ancestors. Now it's decorations. Do you so like at work if they say hey we're doing a secret Santa with a group do you participate? Mm-mm. I don't know. Okay. My uh, my job had a um my job had a holiday party. My first of all my job be doing shit big like they get the ballroom and hotels. I'm about shit to say and, usually the smaller companies holiday parties be lit. Yeah, now nah, they do, but they be telling me the stories and shit. I'm, I'm first of all no disrespect. I don't really fuck with a lot of y'all like that, so I'm not going <laughs> right. to chill with y'all outside of... Because then I'm still not being fully me because I'm still like... I'm still on guard. In work mode. Yeah, because I don't trust that shit. Because it's the president there and all the other... Like, the higher-ups are there. Like, I'm not... No, I'm not fucking wilding out why these motherfuckers is here. The fuck I look like... Get too fucking lit and then I start talking shit to everybody. Nah, I'm cool. That happened to me. I'm cool. <laughs> nah, I'm cool on that. So... I won Summit. Summit was this big deal. Like if you had the top 2% of sales in your particular region, you got to go to Summit. And it was this free trip, four days. You didn't have to take vacation time. It was like you got paid your normal salary. Mm -hmm. And I won. And everything was cool. And then the one night I chose violence because I chose to drink Southern Comfort. I chose to do shots of Southern Comfort with one of the other managers that was on the team. Southern, I don't never, I never got Southern Comfort. Don't. <laughs> okay, I'll take your word for it. Fuck that. Southern. Every time I have Southern Comfort, I enjoy. Well, a, it's like I've noticed if I drink stuff that's really, really sugary, I'm asking to be in pain the next day. Mm. Like that's why I don't really do rum because it's got a lot of sugar in it. Yeah, I'm iffy on rum. Um, but anyway, I drink Southern. I don't even remember what kind of liquor Southern Comfort is, but I know it's strong and I know it gives me hangover. So we had had this party. It was like the night we, like we had all these dinners with guest speakers and stuff, but this was the night we had the party. And after the party, me and this other manager, we went to the bar inside the hotel and we were just throwing back shots of Southern Soco. Mm. Bro, I'm outside and I, I just remember the guy saying, um, now Steve Hodges, I don't know if I should say his name, but fuck it, I said it, mm-hmm. was the regional president. So you had, at the time I was a manager, so you had me. Then you have my boss, who's the area manager. Then you have the director of sales. And then you have the VP of the market. And then you have the regional president, oh, just to shit. give you the levels. Yeah. They was like, yo, chill, chill, chill. Steve's out here. I'm like, man, fuck, fuck Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yo, what's the nigga get that liquor in? He was like, I don't give a fuck. Who that nigga? <laughs> nigga, I'm a man just like him. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> and then I swear the next day I saw him like r- around the hotel and he just kind of looked at me. It was like shaking his head. He was like, <laughs> Did he hear me? <laughs> like, I heard what you said. You ain't going to have a job when you get back Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine this shit? Like, yo, you get, you get, you get back to the job. We're like, um, yeah, I'm, we don't have to talk to you for a minute. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, um, last, the other night, uh, we heard you say, fuck Steve. So, uh, <laughs> Hey, dude used to wear Hawaiian shirts. I think he was cool. I think he understood. Dude used to wear Hawaiian shirts? Yeah, not to work, but like he was like his pictures and shit. He would wear Hawaiian oh, shirts. Oh, yeah. He was shit. doing lines. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 he get the, pink, the pinky nail. Motherfucker was hitting that shit. <laughs> he was hitting that shit. Fuck, why you goddamn you wearing regular, random ass Hawaiian shirts? Bro, you should still go. If you're on vacation, I understand. But yeah. if you just walking around in Hawaiian shirts, that's a problem. 
Right, I was doing that for a while after my, my son graduated, my last son graduated. Nigga, I seen like you wear two Hawaiian shirts, nigga. That's not the you same thing. You saw me two Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see me the rest of the days. Um, nigga said, you don't know about the rest of them. When is it? What? The party. It, it just passed. Oh, they did it early in yeah, the Yeah, it was Wednesday. First of all, it was oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, so like you think I'm gonna go out drink and then work the next day? You fucking bugging. But that's the thing though. Like at my job, it's only four people that has to literally be at the office every day. Okay, that's me, my boss, the inventory specialist, and then at least one of the service people. Throughout the week, there's nobody there. Like oh shit, they'll probably. I say Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are when it's the most of them in the building, but. The rest of the week, ain't nobody there. By four o'clock, they gone. We don't close till five. Oh, By shit. four, everybody but me and my boss is what's left. Oh shit! Yeah, like, them motherfuckers. Yeah, they was like, one dude was salty. I wasn't going. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. I'm not. Like, I, I kept it being with him. Like, yeah, I fucks with like you and homeboy. But other than that, like, it's no That's point it. in me like, going. Like, yeah. like, like, yeah, that makes true. I'm not going to just stand around and try to build conversation with motherfuckers. I know I have nothing in common with. Weird. Like, I can tell even by with the black people that live there. I come from an entirely different <laughs> background than these motherfuckers. Okay, so I'm not gonna bring my goddamn background into their life, and they can yeah. be like, oh. You Are you okay? Him. Huh? You might educate him. I might educate him. <laughs> I might. But I don't know if it's the education that they need. Probably if they going in Wilmington, they might need that education. <laughs> I um <laughs> Yo, we st- <laughs> So this one smaller company I had just they were like a company of 70 just to give you an idea. And they would always have this big Christmas party every year, and they would get like discounted hotel rooms because they knew everybody got kind of lit. So like you could get a discounted hotel room and stay. And the one year, I think one of the years I was a single man, and I got lit, and I woke up <laughs> in a room with somebody I barely knew. Shit. The sad part is I don't remember it. Oh shit! I got like I'm by no means. I've never been a drinker. I've never been one of the people that could put away you know pounds and pounds of liquor and be yeah. walk. That's never been who I am. And I kind of enjoy it because it doesn't cost me much to get drunk. Um, but yeah, Mm-mm. if some scandals, ha- I don't even know if anything happened. I think the way the story goes is the person <laughs> I had a room, one of my friends didn't. And the person had kind of got, the the young lady had kind of got out of control. So he put her in my room, mm. too, just so she was safe. Oh, so she was. But was she safe? But was she safe? <laughs> could you, ima- <laughs> could you well, imagine? First, let me say nothing non-consensual could, happened. Could, but. You, could you imagine you clapping cheeks with a random person and you find out it's the HR person? <laughs> <laughs> She, she got your, she got, she got your ass on ransom now, like, like, oh, you, like motherfucker. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Luckily, it was somebody that somebody brought with them. Did she wanted for the company? She didn't work for the company, so it was a it was a tag along. Yeah, but I think the person they came with, they were just friends, so it wasn't like I slept with somebody's girl. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did they come with a nigga? Yeah, so... Hold on, nigga, no. We're not, we not going to slide past this. <laughs> so, the girl came with a nigga, and they put the girl in your room. To sleep off there. To sleep off there. And two drunk motherfuckers in one room. That's that's bound for clap, cheek clapping. That's, that's, the, that's you literally... You know what? I, I've been saying it lately. He did not read the room well. Yeah, at all. <laughs> Especially if a nigga is lit and you put somebody else who's lit next to him and they cool with it, nigga, the fuck you think gonna happen? <laughs> you better, yeah. Like, wait, was you, was this your plan all along? <laughs> like, 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 um, did you set, she, 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 uh, what's it called? She an escort, ain't she? That's oh, just, shit. <laughs> she, <laughs> no, she like was part of like, you know how you, you hang out with like your boy and he has his other side crew and sometimes y'all hang out. So, like, I knew her before. So, it wasn't like I had never met this person before. Okay. 
I can't remember that person's name now. Like it's been so many years, but it's it's probably good you don't remember it. Let's, let's keep that in the past. I know where you're going with it, and we're just gonna move back. <laughs> <laughs> but not yo. Other day, I uh, my dumbass drank some Hennessy. Damn, nigga. First of all, all you niggas that promote Hennessy, fuck y'all. Okay, that shit had me fucked up. Like the next next day, I had to wake up and go to work. I had to work a whole fucking day, bro. I did not feel like myself. That was the first time I ever was like hung over, hung over. Like I'm in there dumb as shit, walk moving slow as fuck. Like you know how I move. Like I yeah. walk fast. Like I'm doing shit. And I'm in there, like just walking slow as shit. Like I'm not. I'm not for the shits. Like, I was done. I never, never again. And that shit's not even good. Like it don't matter what you mix that shit with. It shit's still nasty. Hennessy surpasses any flavor no yeah, matter what shit. you put it with Hennessy it like is Hennessy. just Hennessy like there's no <laughs> Hennessy and pint that's Hennessy like Hennessy and art that's Hennessy like that shit's horrible Puffy put out a new um, like something that can t- a cognac that can tell with Hennessy mm. I won't fuck with it though I, I can't fuck nah, with it if it's, if it's going but let me Hennessy, let me remind you something that you might not be aware of you sir have now reached the age you can't drink during the week <laughs> you have to restrict your drinking to when you have a day off I should, I should, but at the end of the day, a nice little gra- glass of drink. That, one that, glass. I'm talking about a glass. night of drink. Nah, yeah, nah. We was we was at my in laws, and me. Anytime we go to my in laws, because they got a little bar and they crib and shit, we be fucking shit up. I ain't gonna lie. Like normally, it does be Thursday where we go over there and get lit because we like hype because tomorrow's the last day of the week. Yeah. We gotta worry about shit. No matter what, if I go in here, like I'm still gonna be good because it's just the last fucking day of the week. Right. So. But we 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 misjudged that Hennessy. It was definitely a little too much in my yeah. my cup. Are you past the age where you let your friends punk you into drinking some shit? You know, when we was younger, you'd be like, mm, I don't want to. Be like, come on, stop being a little bitch. Drink that shit. Nah, can't nobody punk me into drinking anything. Cause I will try try any drink, but or so once more I like- get to a point, I'm gonna tell a motherfucker, nah, and say stop being a bitch. I'll be at the night. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, nah. I know what's happening. If I take one more sip, I am cool. I do not want that smoke. Mm-mm. Yeah, I used to. I did not want the hangover the next day. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not you're sick, just that feeling of being that lethargic sluggish and heavy. And, yeah. And that it's not that bad headache, but that one that just kind of floats over here all day and the it's like, it's like that shit fuzzy. Like it yeah. just feel and you try and think and you can't think straight and it shit. It's not worth it to mm-hmm. me anymore. Fuck no. That's why I always know my limit. As soon as soon as I know if I stand up, I'm not gonna walk right, I'm over. It's That's done. It. Yep. <laughs> it's done. I don't need nothing else. Friends I need me some water. Crazy. You ever let a friend influence you? Like, let's say you're talking to somebody and maybe they felt a way about the person you ever let a friend kind of influence? Nah, I probably nah, I did. I did. I know I one one chick I was iffy with, like motherfucker was trying to influence me, like not to fuck with her. And I ain't I didn't press forward with it. But then after a while, I was the type of motherfucker, like, I was like, you know what? Fuck what people say about somebody. I'm just going to test it, see if I like. That's it's it's the head the chick that gave me head in the park. Oh. <laughs> like they they told me like she wasn't good and she was she was a hoe and all that shit. But she ain't let me hit early. Actually, I didn't hit. That's all I got was hit. But anyway, she turned out to be like cool as shit. She was actually cool. Okay. But then uh our relationship faded and I wasn't into that shit and she was extra and I realized that wasn't for me. But they just said she was like a hoe and was going to be doing extra shit which she wasn't. So I don't know if any of my friends ever like said somebody was a hoe but they were to a point inject their opinion about what they thought about the person's appearance which would then it started making me look at them some kind of way. Cuz you know how a person could be Flip side, like, you know how a person can be, like, super attractive? Yeah. But then they do something ugly, so you don't see them as attractive anymore. Like, Mm -hmm. outside of the situation, they're an attractive human being. But because they've done some shit that's so ugly, you don't see them as attractive anymore. Mm -hmm. I seen a bad bitch. Never mind. A bad bitch that got a train ran on her. Mm -mm. She's ugly now. That's to me. She's ugly. 
Or like they just have a shitty personality. They treat people that like shitty. Shit. Mm-hmm. Um, They'd be the prettiest motherfucker, but had the worst fucking attitude. Yeah, and like they, the girl <laughs> in fifth grade who told me you know, <clears throat> I was seven up. I never had her and I never will. She's ugly to me now. I don't even know what she looked like. You <laughs> said you was seven up. Remember the girl, my boy called me, my boy, this kid called me on three-way back when it was new. Mm-hmm. And he had said, uh, do you like Monica? You know when you're that age, you'd be like, nah, I don't like her so-and-so. You always deny it and shit. And then she comes out of nowhere and she was like, good, because I'm like, seven up, you never had me, you never will. No. It was the slogan for seven up, because it never had caffeine. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very embarrassing time. That's like <laughs> You never had me, you never will. That was a defense mechanism. She just got turned down, so she like, nah, all right, motherfucker, you ain't never, because y'all was on three way, right? Yeah, yeah. She I just, never thought about she that. She just got turned down. That you think I could hit? It's you. You could have hit. This is the problem. It was in fifth grade. So. It was in fifth grade. You still could have hit. You think I could hit now? You probably again, but it probably looked weird. <laughs> probably that that pussy like. Fucking <laughs> that. Like, hey, girl, seven up. I said seven up. <laughs> she said what? But now, years yeah, ago, you... I looked her up on. I was just curious because a lot of the, the chicks that I was really into when I was younger are like fat now. Mm-hmm. I love. I, I looked up a lot of my exes too. I made out like a bandit. <clears throat> Tell you that much. These bitches. <laughs> anyway, I do apologize for that, but I'm a good person. Fuck y'all. I'm a good nigga now. So you are a good person. <laughs> that's all that matters. No, but not that's, my that's friend. Like one day, they made like a comment that. The girl I was dating like kind of looked retarded. Mm-hmm. Well, can you, you can't say she that looked, word. On the spectrum, she looked like she was on the spectrum. I guess is the right way to say it. He said, "Yo, she looked like she ride she ride the bus with a helmet on." She said, it's a... "And I don't know if I didn't really pay attention to it before, mm-hmm. but I noticed it mm-hmm. often after that." That's the thing. When somebody would tell you something about somebody, you'll start looking at that particular feature and you'll start thinking about that shit. That's the same way I was. Uh, they said one girl that I did looked like a frog. <laughs> they, even, they even called her Frogger. Oh, shit. <laughs> she did, though. That's the... <laughs> Not to be an asshole, but she kind of did. She had them white ass lips. She had a fat ass though, but that was it. Ain't that crazy the shit will excuse because somebody got a fat ass? Yeah. Yo, niggas ain't shit. All you need is a fat ass. They like, gonna, yo, they... yo, you see that girl with the one eyeball? She got a fat I ass. I see the nigga. I see the bitch with a fucked up eye. That ass was huge. <laughs> niggas don't care, yo. Like, as long as there's something, I guess, let me say, some dudes. But niggas don't take rejection well. But some dudes, as long as there's a specific thing that they like about you, they will talk to you regardless of anything. Would you would you talk to a deaf chick? To a deaf chick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know that hand job gotta be slamming. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like the joke that how did Helen cover Helen Keller discover um masturbation? She was trying to read her own lips. <laughs> Oh shit! But yeah, nah. I would, I would date a chick, deaf chick. What's the? Dumbest? I would have to learn the sign language. I was almost learning it because my sister had a uh, one of her old best friends was deaf, and my sister was killing that shit with the yeah. deaf, with the sign. I said deaf sign, sign language. I apologize. I'm a little tipsy, so <laughs> my words might get get construed. But y'all know what I mean. But yeah, she used to be good as shit with that. I never could learn that shit. What's the dumbest thing your friends ever convinced you to do? What you mean? Probably take one for the team and ain't get no pussy. That might have been a benefit, though. That No, because I was a horny nigga. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, that's right. <laughs> like, I, even though I was taking one for the team, I was like, cool, I'm about to get some pussy. Like, <laughs> like, that's, all, that's all I cared about. <laughs> like, yo, I ain't... Like that, it's crazy because you know most motherfuckers like if they don't get it, they won't mind because they taking one, one for the team. team. But I was like, I've been without and I'm taking one for the team, and so, I'm not taking nothing for the team. Like, <laughs> like at least I get something out of this. Yeah, ain't, got nothing. ain't get nothing. I was like, God damn. 
I ain't never see that bitch again or anything. That would have been perfect. That would have been perfect. I ain't never see her again or anything. You ever had a blind date? Blind date? No, I will never do a blind date. Well, not now, but... No, nah, I mean, like, I'm just talking in general. Okay. Even if I wasn't married, like, if I was saying I would never do a blind date, I'm not with that shit. I got... But social media is almost like a blind date. If you find somebody to date on social media, that's like a blind date. Because none of you motherfuckers look like y'all actual pictures. I'm just saying. Because in, in person, y'all don't look like y'all pictures. Yo, my man Magic posted this shit and had me dying. He said, if 80% or more of your pictures have a filter, you're not a bad bitch. You're a graphic designer. <laughs> 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 and could you produce my next mix cover? <laughs> that's, that's facts, yo. That is facts. Like, if if you constantly using filters and all that shit, like, that's not you. That's your skin's not that perfect. You're not you're not glowing. Like, especially them goddamn dog filters. I'm tired of them shits. Do people still do that? I don't know. I remember back when Snapchat they, started. That with... shit went crazy. And all y'all look like pugs. Y'all look like funny ass looking dogs. Oh shit, we haven't talked about TV. And I got another one for you. What? I've been watching Blacklist. Is it good? I always say that I wanted to watch that. I never watched it. Fucking amazing. I'm. It's nine seasons. I'm up to season five. Damn. That shit's fire. All right, I'm gonna check that one. That out. That shit's fire. You yeah. You. I think you. And it's kind of like into criminal minds type shit like that. Yeah. You will fuck with that. Okay. Red intends my nigga on the low. All right. Um, the peripheral is on Amazon Prime. So okay, I'll give you the premise of the shit. Yeah. So the premise of the shit is. Is the is this kid this kid and his and her brother. Her brother is in the Marines and all his Marine buddies live together. Not together, but in the same town. And they play these video games for like money and shit. So somebody sends them this thing to be 3D printed. And I think it's set in 2023. Mm-hmm. And it's this headset. And it's they tell them that it's um a company that's testing out a new virtual reality sim. Mm-hmm. So the sister on the low was really good at the fucking games. Like she was the explorer. And she was the one who would, like, go in and, like, kill shit. So she puts it on. Well, what it does is it transfer. They find out that it transfers your consciousness into this, like, avatar that they call a peripheral. Mm. And you're, like, doing shit. And they think it's a game. Well, actually, they're transferring their consciousness from the past into the future. And I'm going to leave you there. That shit is pretty fucking dope. That, that was uh, another one boss man put me on. Yeah, that's... That's interesting. It was an interesting concept, and they left me on a, oh, shit, and now the season's over. <laughs> Fuck that. <clears throat> Fuck that. And I that, hate that shit. Yeah. And then we watched Wednesday. Yeah, I've been seeing that everywhere on Netflix. Yeah. I ain't looking, it's up, looking at it It's decent. Yeah. Do they got uh everybody in there? You mostly see... The parents, uh-huh. it's the, the show is centered around the character Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Pugsley is in a couple of episodes, and Uncle Fester's like in one episode, but it's mostly Thing? centered around her character. Thing is in it the whole time. Okay. Yeah. That's like her um, right hand. But it's, it's written really well. Tim Burton did a great job on it, and it's so much so I read that um, they're looking to use that director to do um, the Agatha Harkness series for Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you got ever watched got to watch WandaVision, but she was like the villain in WandaVision. Got you. And they're gonna do a spinoff series with just her. So they're looking to use him to do that series because they thought it was good. That's right. It was worth it was good. The only thing I I didn't like was I didn't like who they cast as the father. I can't think of dude's name now. But he's heavy set, Spanish dude. Oh, what the fuck is his name? Anyway, that was the only thing I didn't like. I didn't like him as that character. Right. I cannot think of his name or another I can think. I can see him in a bunch of other movies, but I can't think of the names of them to tell you who it was. Gotcha. I'm I'm gonna look into that shit. But it was it might be something like you could watch with like your, your son because I think it's targeted around a little bit younger of an audience. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Phone call came through. <laughs> oh, I hope it's not ruining the video. Oh, I hope it's not either. Forgot to put it on. <laughs> Yeah, I just heard my man get a phone call. Oh, hold on a second. Let me just make sure. Oh, nigga, your headset. Nigga, <laughs> you're about to take everything out. It is what it is. We halfway through. Technical difficulty shit happens. No, still, recording. still recording? Good shit. We in there, bitches. 
But back like to the um part of the subject. Uh have you ever somebody tried to convince you not to fuck with somebody and then you find out later that they trying to fuck with that person? Ooh. That's a good one. I was so mad. Tell me your story, because I can't think that happened it, to me. It wasn't too much. Like, it was this chick in school, and, like, she was, like, she was nice. But motherfucker was telling me, like, because he knew how I was, and, you know, like, if I know you get around, like, I'm not fucking with you. Like, I'm not talking to you. And he was constantly trying to convince me of that shit. And then, like, like a week or so later, after I was, like, Slowing down on talking to the chick. I see this nigga over by her locker, like conversating with her and shit. Yeah, giggle, got giggle, got the lead. Got the lead. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yo, nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> it was like, oh nah, bro, I ain't nothing like that. I'm just like, nigga, you just all you want, all you wanted to, all you had to do was tell me you was interested in. And it. I would have and I'd have backed the fuck yeah. off. Like, that's the type of person I am. If it's somebody you already interested in, just tell me and I'm gonna back the fuck off. Don't don't lie to me like she yeah. ain't shit and then try to talk to her. Like that's some bullshit. Do you believe the code that if if your man once dated somebody <sighs> that you cannot date that they're off the market? Just so y'all know, I am a thousand percent firm believer in this code. Once somebody that is my nigga and I've seen you dated this person, they are like they look like a sister to me now. Like, there's no attraction. There's no, even if they try in the future, there's nothing that they can give, like, that's going to make me be like, yeah, I tried dating you. Like, no. Like, if you dated the bro, you off limits. Like, I'm not fucking with you. Like, yeah. and that's not how everybody think. But that's how I think. Like, if you dated somebody who I call my friend, I'm not going to date you. Yeah. Like, it's just it's just a respect factor. Like, I, I believe even though they that, don't give a fuck no more, it's just a respect factor. I believe in that. To however one time I did not act that way. Mm -hmm. But in my defense, two other people in the group had slept with this person. So So she was all of ours. That's what he's saying. <laughs> she was, that's what he's saying. <laughs> she was for the team, bro. Like, don't get mad at me. She for the team. Mm -mm. Nah, you like a dude at that point to me. Yeah, like. I'm not going to try to attempt to date somebody that one of my people's dated. Like, that's just off limits to me. Now, like, what happens if it's like, um, what was that movie? I don't think I've ever watched the whole movie, but Pearl Harbor was a movie that came out in late 90s, early 2000s. But man's died and his boy ends up marrying his wife. And I think the way it works out is, let's say, we're going to use Fred, right? Because you know I don't like using real names. So something happens to you, and Fred's there to console your wife. Mm. Like, you know, you know, um, D asked me to look out for you guys like you're my own family. So through the process of that, damn, this is manifest again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. But so then Fred gets close to your wife mm -hmm. because you're going during the time that he was just trying to be there for her and your kids. I'm haunting the fuck out of Fred. <laughs> I'm haunting the fuck out of Fred. Nigga, as soon as you go, as soon as he give her a call, as soon as he hang out, I'm gonna be standing next to him. That's my pussy. That's 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 What you doing? <laughs> like, nah, bro. Don't even do that. I just, I just, I just can't. Like, as soon as I find out a friend of mine dates somebody, like you're unattractive to me. Like, granted, you're not an ugly person, but still, just to me, you're unattractive because yeah. you just you was with my man's. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna step on his toes or because honestly, I feel like it's like you never know what somebody felt about somebody. And sometimes dudes, we're not honest about like I don't really fuck with her like yeah. that. Yeah, we'll say that shit like I don't really fuck with her like that, but deep down inside, I miss her, my yeah. baby. Like yeah, niggas, that and that's a part of our problem too, niggas. Start being upfront with your fucking feelings. Nigga, if you love her, say you fucking love her so niggas don't try to tap that. If you niggas try to tap that, you going to be crying and you going to be like, nah, fuck him. I don't fuck with him no more. I don't fuck with her either. And everybody ain't shit because your yeah. ass didn't tell your fucking emotions and say you was in love with this bitch. You know something I wanted to address? Your too? bitch is a bitch. 
Not mine. I just had to. I just had to reiterate. Had to clarify that. I think people also need to. I thought about how like I'd done it once before, right? But I couldn't do it forth going. And I think sometimes people look at the lens that they originally saw the person in, right? Mm. So if I met, if let's say the first day I met you, you were having a bad day, you were an asshole. And then so now in my mind, you're always that asshole. I don't even think that, that it doesn't even sound right asking the question or saying it out loud because I understand or I believe people have the capacity to change for the better, mm. right? Or the worse, but for the better. And that, so I don't see you for 20 years. And then when I'm talking to people about you, all I'm talking about is that lens that I once knew you in. Mm. I don't think that's fair. Mm. Yeah. In the sense of that's the lens that I used to know you in. Like maybe I can speak about that's how you used to be, but I don't know how you are today. Yeah. And it's, a, I mean, I use a little surface thing, but if I, if I call you a friend or family or whatever, if, if I'm going to speak about you, especially to somebody else you know, right? Mm-hmm. Keep in mind that your knowledge of me is 20 years in the past. Mm-hmm. So you don't fucking know me. Yeah, that's facts. Like, yo, if it's been so long in the past, you don't know that person. If y'all haven't been conversating, y'all haven't been, you don't know that person. So you can't base anything off of the past of what somebody was. Like, that's, everybody puts people in a box. You put them in that specific box because you remember them or know them to be in that box. If you haven't conversated with them or had any interaction with them, you still remain to hold on to that specific box because that is what you understood and what you were used to. But over time, people change and they develop d- different habits, develop different personality traits, all of that. And for you to put them in that same box is unfair. I agree. I think the core of who you are is who you are. But I think for the most part, people improve as you age and as you have experiences. None of us know who we are. I'm going to say it. We don't know who we are until we get further in life. Every day, you're still finding out more and more who you are. You find out more about your past experience with certain things that you did actually meant to you that you didn't realize till now. Like You're always improving on yourself, so you never truly know exactly what... The most you can truly know is the specific things that you want in life. But besides that, you don't... 100% know your personality. Like me, I don't 100% know my personality. This morning, I forget what the fuck she said, but my wife just dropped down a list on my ass. And I was like, what the fuck? That is me. Like, <laughs> I didn't know that that's how I was. And she was like, yeah, I know. That is that is you. Like, I was like, oh shit, that, that's true. Like, we don't know who, the ones that deal with us on a daily basis. They know who we are. Well, I think it's like, you know you've never seen your face like everybody else sees your face, right? Because you only can see a reflection of your face. Mm-hmm. So I think we have our own opinions of ourselves. And then I think other people have their, they're looking from a different lens, right? But I was sitting there thinking when you were talking, I said, I think that's why sometimes I give people so many chances. Because I'm the believer in that people can improve and get better. Mm-hmm. Sometimes probably to a fault, right? Mm. At my own detriment. And so I don't understand when people don't choose to recognize somebody's growth. Yeah. That that that's weird to me. Yeah. That shit that shit that's almost like belittling somebody cuz if you don't recognize somebody's growth and where they came from like they tend to start getting discouraged about the changes that they made to try and be a better person. Like No, I don't give a fuck. I mean, I'm motherfuckers lying. like us don't don't we gonna say we don't give a fuck, but in Depending reality, on who it is, you, you care to a certain extent. Right, you don't care to the point where you're going to change your habits because this person didn't acknowledge the fact that you've changed this amount. But you only care because those people tend to put you back in that fucking box that you're not in anymore. Yeah. So that shit is the part that's fucking annoying. Like. Don't put me in that box. That was the past me. Like, I don't do that shit no more. I don't give a fuck about that. Like, don't do that shit. I think it ties in with our love language we were talking about last week because we like acknowledgement, right? Like, I put in some, like, I I think I've always been a good person at the core of who I am. I don't think I've ever been a, a, a 
terrible human being. I may have done some hurtful things to people or have made some mistakes, but I don't think at the core I was a terrible human being. At the moment, I was having a moment of selfishness or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be, right? And so I think, I think I try and do so much for people. And like you said, I don't want anything in return. I don't want your money. I don't want, unless you're a client, um, pay me. <laughs> um, but I just want you to recognize like what I've done. I think there's so many people that influence me. Like I, my, my one son's name is Christian. And the other day I was thinking about how I had a, a teacher, a history teacher. And it was the first history teacher that taught us the real history, right? Um, he was a black man. And he would teach us about what was going on and how it affected us, mm-hmm. aside from just what was in the curriculum. And he was just a great person, rest in heaven. Um, his name is Christian O'Neill. Yeah, and I was like, shit, I wonder if that influenced me. You know what I mean? Like, oh. And so I always wonder, like, I always want, I hope that most people who meet me think that I had some kind of enrichment in their life, whether I helped them pair their Bluetooth heads to their phone or I help them with a bigger problem in life, right? Because that that's who I want to be. That's who I want to be remembered by. And it was kind of cool when David was talking about how we first met, how we had a good interaction when we first yeah. met. Like, it was kind of cool to hear that. And then you hear that other people that might have had close relationships who just don't see it the same way. It's kind of hurtful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. But in reality, like, we don't... They don't matter, but... <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. Like, in reality, they don't really matter. Like, what matters is the ones who actually see the change in you and the ones that actually see the positive that you bring. Like if people only focus on your negative shit and the shit that you didn't do right and all that, they're not the type of people that you need to have around you. Like the type of people that you need to have around you are the ones that, yeah, they're going to tell you about the negative that you did, but they're not going to focus on that. They're going to focus on the positive that you're doing and the change that they see in you. That's what matters. Motherfuckers are too focused on the people who bring them down and try to make try to um, satisfy them rather than understanding that there's people already satisfied with where you came from and what you're trying to do in life. Right. So fuck the motherfuckers that are just trying to bring me down. Like I'm going to focus on these people that actually see my positive and see the changes I'm trying to make and see the good that I'm trying to do. Like that shit, the other shit don't matter. That's why anybody ever said anything negative about me. Guess what? You can suck the back of my dick two times because I don't give a fuck. But all of those who actually see the change and see me working hard and see all, I fucking love y'all, yo. Y'all mean the world to me. Yeah. Because that's what matters. Like, what I did in the past don't fucking matter. It's the past to just for that. It's the past. You can't change it. You can't go back. You can't make anything different back there. Only thing you can do is learn from that shit and continue to push forward and make shit better. That's crazy, too, because you see how, like, you know, how they drug fucking Kevin Hart about a, a tweet he made years ago. Like, People grow. <laughs> yeah. I was about to make a joke, but I was like, you know what? Nah. <laughs> nah. Well, here it now. Not, huh? Nah, I, I would have hit my son in the head with the dollhouse too. Fuck oh, you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, now nah, I want to hear it. Nah, that's why I said no, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> hey, yeah, live your truth, right? <laughs> but um, people grow and people change, and I don't think you can continue to hold them to the person you once knew. Young and dumb is a thing. All y'all young motherfuckers don't want to admit that y'all dumb. Y'all are young and fucking retarded. You're not supposed to say that like we said, but y'all are young and dumb as fuck. And the fact that once y'all actually change that and start growing into y'all actual selves, y'all will learn that y'all was young and dumb. Like, like, I didn't think I was young and dumb until now where I'm realizing like, um, if I would have started what I'm doing now back then, nigga, where I'd be in life right now, motherfucker. Like, that's facts, though. You I live think, and you learn. That's why we we, I, we constantly come back to it and say, would you, what would you go back in life and change? I don't know to change it because I wouldn't have learned the lesson. I wouldn't have learned the lesson. If I would have liked to learn the lessons a little sooner sometimes. That, but... See, that's the only thing. That, that's probably what we would change, being able to learn the but same lesson Can all this sooner. shit that happened, can you, from in 10 years, can you get back to like five? Yeah, <laughs> just, 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 just half it. Just half that time yeah. period. We would be straight. But, but I also facts, think though. that speaks to our resilience. I think you and I are both like resilient. And I don't want to say like cockroaches, but cockroaches can survive anything. But I think that's, that's one commonality that me and you both have. We have 
talked offline about like just some really challenging fucked up shit that we had to go through. Big facts. And we fucking did it. We're fucking here. Nigga, we still made here. It past it. Still alive, nigga. Nigga, still, still maintaining, still keeping shit flowing. And still growing and getting better. And still getting better. That's big facts. Maybe the cockroach gets a bad name. Nah, fuck the cockroach. I'm sorry. Yeah, but they resilient I had motherfuckers. Roaches. I had roaches. So did I. When I was a young bull. Man, you ever... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you ever take take take, take a picture down and the motherfuckers is <laughs> up? They was motherfuckers. You take the picture down, they just <laughs> or you click like, the light you, on and they all scatter the and on, shit. They scatter, boy. I do not miss that shit. Mm 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 mm. You can't even take nothing in nobody crib. Like you can just take yourself. And your again. parents used to tell you, don't take no bags and sit them down there. <laughs> As facts, bring Yo, the back to the house. I was in school one time. And I don't know, it came from my shit, it had to have, but I played it off like it didn't. I put, I put my motherfucking binders and shit on the motherfucking table. And then out of nowhere, a fucking roach came up and crawled on the shit. And I hurried up and smacked it and killed it. And then I look over, nigga looking at me, big ass eyes and everything. <laughs> I like, like, like he seen that shit. I was like, oh, you see that shit, bro? He's like, yeah, this school dirty as shit. I was like, yeah, you right, my guy. I said, yeah, let He's me like, try to make for that. Sure. I ain't thinking that. Motherfucker <laughs> <shit. laughs> <laughs> made a lie for me and everything. I was like, oh, shit. That shit was funny. It wasn't funny then. It's no. funny now. Yeah. But back then, nigga, I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! He knows. <laughs> he knows. Somebody spotted it, and that's why, like the, the the time it happened, especially recently when it happened at work, I make a big deal about it, like to the person, right? Like, yes, what, did I have fucking goosebumps and all my hair was standing up on end? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, but I don't know that person's situation. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna make them feel embarrassed. I was so quiet about it, and I finally had to tell him what I thought the problem was, and he was like. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And it turns out he had lent it to family. Mm. So it had come from his families like that. But, mm. but he that, was so thankful. He's like, I appreciate you not like making a big deal and like making me feel embarrassed about it. Yeah. No, nah, that's real shit. So, and it's that's the fucked up part. Cause it takes a motherfucker that comes from and dealt with that shit to be able to understand somebody's pain when it comes mm-hmm. to that shit. Um, fuck, it was something else I was about to say. I forgot. I haven't done that in a minute. I haven't done that in a minute. But I completely forgot, so we're going to go ahead and continue. Damn, it was something about the real story. The Trapper Keeper, how you open it. Oh, if y'all got roaches too bad, that's their house. You got to move the fuck out. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. Because, yeah, sometimes you move into a house and that was their house already. Mm-hmm. So you need to just go ahead and pack it the fuck up because... They not going nowhere. You can bomb that bitch. You can do all that shit. They is not going nowhere. What do they say? The only two things that'll survive nuclear war is cockroaches and Twinkies. Yep. Cockroaches and Twinkies. It's going to be cockroaches eating Twinkies around this bitch. (laughs) It's going to be nothing but cockroaches and Twinkies left. Did you imagine being the last nigga and all you got to eat is Twinkies and cockroaches? (laughs) You got to get your protein somewhere. How about this (laughs) thing? <laughs> how long do you think? How many? How many days, month, years of Twinkies do you eat? We finally say, I'm gonna figure out how to cook these cockroaches. I don't know, man, because I'm gonna be doing a lot of shit with them Twinkies. I'm gonna be frying them. I'm gonna be baking them. I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be doing everything with the motherfuckers. But eventually, you are gonna be like, mm, what are these cockroaches hitting for? <laughs> Motherfucker, you gonna have you gonna have a bowl of cockroaches like a bowl of nuts, motherfucker. I mean, <laughs> Papa new shits. I mean, it's delicacy in some countries. Yeah, them big ass motherfucker. Mm-mm. I couldn't. I knew a nigga that used to eat ants on purpose. Purposely, I knew a nigga that used to sniff Smarties. I knew a lot of weird niggas. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably just curious like me. I've never been that curious. <clears throat> nah, I ain't been that curious. I remember one dumbass story speaking of roaches when we were kids. I don't know why we thought this would kill them. So we had um carpet in our apartment. We had wall to wall carpet. Like my um, uncle's friend was like a carpenter. He was like the bomb with carpeting apparently back then. And uh me and my sister for some reason thought if you shredded crayons. 
it would kill him. So I don't know if we had seen like our parents with boric acid. You, I don't know if you ever seen, you know that white powder. Yeah. And you would put it under shit. So when they crawled through it, it killed them. So I don't know if we had seen that. And that was where we got, I don't, my sister had the imagination I fucking had. So anyway, so we had shredded up all these crayons and we would just go lift the corners up of the carpets in different places and like put it under there. So a couple of years later, they decided like, you know, we're going to go back to floors, right? Because I, I hate wall of carpeting. Mm. Um, anyway. And so they lifted the carpet. <laughs> so it's wilty crayon. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. I know she is hot. Mm-hmm. I would still love to wonder what our young brains why we thought that that was poisonous. Yeah, that's a lot of the funny shit because you don't think about how your thought process was back then. I feel like because my brother used to always. My oldest brother used to always say this about kick. I feel like that's how every kid is. You don't think, you just do shit. Right. So you thought like the crayon will kill it, so you just did it. You didn't think about is it really going to kill it? How long would it be there? That made, like the way my brain thinks, cause and effect. If then, then you had what? to see something to make y'all something be like something sparked that idea. Like, oh, I got crayons. I can just shred them up. <laughs> That is a good question. But who the hell knows what that? It definitely had to was. be a reason, cause ain't no way in fuck you just gonna be like crayons will work. You had to see something or hear something that would make you think that crayons will work for cockroaches, but they don't. Did I ever tell the story of why you research words before you use them? So you don't look fucking retarded. I mean, stupid. I, I keep could, saying retarded. I apologize. It could be worse. I apologize if I told this story before we we've hit the point where we've done so many episodes I can't remember. It was about the fifth grade, and there was a show called Hunter mm. that was on TV, mm. and it was a detective show, right? Mm. I like the show. Maybe I shouldn't have been watching it. Who knows? So in this one episode, this woman had gotten raped. Mm. Now, obviously, they didn't show the rape on TV. You just see. When they're interviewing the woman, she looks like she got beat up. Yeah. So my young, what, nine, ten-year-old brain just associated rape was another way to say beat up. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, see where the story's going? Yeah, I see where this is going. So there was this girl. I think her name was Adrian. I think I can still remember. And she liked me. Yeah, to be a girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it would have been worse if it was a boy. See, if the shit had happened today, I, I'd have been in some juvenile <laughs> detention center. Oh. So we're in computer class, and like she would lean over and she'd blow in my ear, right? She and, wanted to D. I mean, oh, but yeah, I didn't yeah, understand I'm, that I'm, at I'm, nine or ten. I wasn't these fast oh, as yeah. kids. I was, you know, I, yo, well, these kids it's fast as fuck. So she kept blowing my ear, kept bothering me. So I was like, Adrian, stop. And mean you, I think I'm a nerd. I didn't learn a new word. Let me use my thesaurus on you real quick. Like, yo, I swear to God. If you don't stop blowing my ear, I'm going to fucking rape you. I didn't say fucking, but I'm going to rape you after class. And she looked at me and her face got all red. She kind of had a smirk. And I was in, at the time I was in like a computer class, like a segmented class. And I was the only guy in the class. And I think it was like six, seven other girls. And the teacher was a girl. And they all just kind of looked. But nobody ever said anything afterward. Oh, shit. Nobody ever said, I, I think either A, this young man needs some psychiatric help. Or B, or he don't B, know what the fuck, know what the fuck he's about. saying. Yeah. And then I remember being an adult, and I don't know why, randomly, the memory just came. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yo, that's... Shit. That's a fucked up... That's a fucked up way to disrespect somebody. <laughs> like, yo, you keep fucking with me. I'm a rape. <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny, but it's funny. <laughs> hey, you got to be some type of disrespectful motherfucker to say some shit like that. Or, or ignorant. Or ignorant. Or ignorant, because you didn't know. I think I was a little... Nigga, like, <laughs> So when I remember that, down the hall. y'all rape every one of you niggas. <laughs> Fuck you talking about? <laughs> you know how every once in a while I say this is the episode that YouTube's gonna pull. Uh, this, this might this be the might episode. Be the <laughs> yeah, we apologize. We don't condone. Okay, no, no. we don't. It's just jokes, and we don't condone not using words that you don't know what they mean. Facts. Do not do that. It's too you easy to Google the word. We have all this technology at our fingertips. Don't just say shit just to say it. Oh, shit. But, sir, what's your final thought? My final thought, don't just say shit just to say it. (laughs) 
Don't let anybody influence your take on a person. You have to figure that shit out for yourself and love every single fucking person. We all deserve love. Yes. Um, while I agree, don't just blindly let somebody influence. Um, everybody wants to offer advice, right? But I think it's important to look at a person who's offering you advice. If you, if I'm selling houses, let's say, for example, and you've never sold or bought a house, I don't know that you can really provide me any valuable mm. information, right? So I think if you're going to look for influence to help, look to somebody who's experienced and preferably more experienced than yourself mm-hmm. in whatever endeavor you're trying to do. Um, make sure. This is one of them episodes we were all over the place, but hey, hey. I, I we believe in great conversation. Just let it fucking happen. And we, that's what happens This is sometimes. natural conversation. We try to have natural conversations. That way y'all can actually see how our co- this is literally how our conversation would go on a random fucking yeah. day. So and I always like listening to podcasts where I feel like I just pulled up a chair and I'm sitting in the group with everybody. Facts, too. So hopefully yeah. you guys get that from us. But facts. listen and watch and then go back and watch it and listen. Make sure you get all the gems and all the funny stories and all the jokes that we told during the episode. Big facts. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Warm the Crib across Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. On TikTok, we are Warm the Crib Podcast. Make sure you like comment subscribe go to the youtube subscribe hit the notifications make sure you have all of that make sure you stay with us we will continue to bring y'all this content and we appreciate every single one of y'all hey and for those of you that participate merry christmas Big happy facts. holidays happy holidays peace yeah <laughs> <laughs> want to do that again yeah do it one more time all right have a happy holiday we'll see you guys after the new year Peace. Peace. That was better.